Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Ali, and today I'm going to talk to you about WebAssembly and the future of the browser. Uh, that's a, not the logo. There's not really a logo yet. It's still a work in progress. So, um, before I define it, I want to talk about applications that you wouldn't s typically see on the browser. You would prefer to run on your computer natively. And so these are applications and software like. Uh, like uh, digital audio workstations, maybe like CAD software, 3D modeling, um, or like big game engines or games, AAA games. You'd rather run them on your machine than in the browser because it's, it's kind of slow. So what, what do all these things have in common? It's that they are um, they're CPU intensive. So they, they require high performance and low latency. So you want things to happen in the real time. You want them to happen fast. And you don't want to wait for anything. So uh, why can't the browser handle these tasks? Um, so short answer. It's JavaScript. There he is. Um, he's slow when it comes to running these CPU intensive tasks, but he's happy because he's super popular and he's used everywhere on the web because he's really nice to use and really easy to use to design interfaces and stuff like that. So, but again, not so good for CPU intensive tasks. So let's talk about why this is. So a problem with writing performant JavaScript is that mem memory management and garbage collection is automatic. So this means that you can't physically access memory addresses in JavaScript or collect garbage on your own time. And so if, if garbage has to be collected in your, in your memory map for JavaScript, it's just going to happen automatically and your program's going to hang a little bit. Not ideal for like real-time applications. And so another problem is that you have no ability to write in, in line assembly. So this means like go under the hoods. You can't go like a level deeper. Like, so JavaScript in VA goes into C++. You can't, or I'm sorry, it goes into machine code. You can't go like a level deeper and like maybe work with the intricacies of bits and like shifting bits or like m messing with a byte of code. You just can't do that. And so this example here is, is C code. So I can write C code like normal and then just say ASM and I'm going to go into my processor language assembly and start messing with registers and stuff. So these are really good abilities to have when you're, when you're developing like a, a CPU intensive program where you want to squeeze out all the performance from your CPU and use as little memory as possible. So obviously you don't want to write these programs in JavaScript. So you don't want these to run in JavaScript rather. So WebAssembly is here to save the day. Almost. It, it started in 2015 and it's still being standardized and being implemented. But uh, now I can finally define it. Um, so what is WebAssembly? It's a low-level assembly-like language that's going to ideally run in the browser, or it will run in the browser. It will work alongside JS. So this is not something to replace JS, but to help it. Um, it's a new standard for the web being developed by people from Google, Apple, Mozilla, and Microsoft. So like, if these big names are working on it, obviously they see potential, and they want to standardize like, CPU-intensive apps on the web. So uh, it's not designed to be actually written by yourself. It's designed to be compiled to, which is my next point. Um, so the idea is that you can compile any high-level programming language into WebAssembly. And so you can pour your apps to the web that way, because WebAssembly will run in the browser. So it's a binary format, and it also has a text format that maps one-to-one. -one. Um, so what this means is that you have your assembly text format, and then each line in, or instruction in assembly maps to a certain chunk of binary data. So all right. I don't know if that made sense, but I'm going to maybe walk through an example of a situation that WebAssembly would help. So let's say you have a big application you want to run on the browser, and WebAssembly is existent at this point, and you can use it. So you have your application, it's a C++ file, and you want to compile it into WASM. So WebAssembly is a .WASM. And as you can see, it's, bi it's a binary file, so it's very compact, tiny, and it's on your server. So you compile the code into WASM, and then when you want to send it to your client, you uh, Obviously, since it's small and compact, it's pretty nice to send over to your client. It's not, it's not going to take so long to load up. Um, and this gets run in your JavaScript engine. It skips the interpreter because it's not JavaScript and can, run and can be parsed through your engine and then run on your machine. So hopefully that cleared up how it would work. So now I want to talk about something that came before WebAssembly, which is called Asm.js. Oh, shoot. My ordering is off. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, I'll just pull it all up. So it's a precursor to WebAssembly. It's also a compile target, but only for C and C++, whereas WebAssembly, the idea is it'll work for any high-level language. Um, it's a statically typed subset of JavaScript, which is very weird, because JavaScript is dynamically typed. So like, you actually initialize a variable as like a 32-bit integer in, in, this, in this subset of JavaScript called ASM. 
and uh, you're thinking you can't access memory in ASM, so how do you actually compile from C++ or C to JavaScript? And the idea is that you use a typed array as your memory map for C. And if you remember, you can do like bitwise operations in JavaScript. That's where this comes in. So you can do a bitwise shift on that typed array and change bits of values. It's really cool. It's really interesting. And it actually runs pretty fast. It's pretty good. It's, it's not near native, but it's, it's, it's still pretty fast than running something directly in JavaScript. But um, how is WebAssembly better? So I already gave it away, but there's less data over the wire. So if I go, or I'll say both, less data over the wire and parsing binary is much faster for your JavaScript engine than, than JavaScript. Um, so over the wire, from the server to the client, you're going to be sending a giant ASM.js file. So that's going to be a giant chunk of JavaScript that's going to take longer to send to your client. And also parsing ASM.js is the real bottleneck. So when V8 or, or SpiderMonkey tries to parse JavaScript, that's going to go much slower than parsing WASM, which is binary code, which is quick. Um, OK, moving on. Uh, finally, I can show you an example of WASM. So it doesn't really look like an assembly language. It kind of looks like Lisp um, with all the parentheses and stuff. But so this is something that I'm going to export to JavaScript. So that's why you see a module. And you see export at the bottom, export add. So this is a function called add. And it takes two parameters. It takes left-hand side and right-hand side. And so it says param, left-hand side, right-hand side. And on the right, you see i32. That's the type. And then on the far right to that is the, is the return. So it's expecting an i32 to return. And so the one instruction in this function says, do an i32 add of left-hand side and right-hand side. And as you can see, get local from both of those, that's actually going to memory and pulling out that data from those parameters. And then we export it at the end. So here, I'm not going to go too, too in detail on this, but basically, we're exporting this into JavaScript. So if you look at the last line where you see let a, so now let a equals instance.exports.add, we're actually using WebAssembly to, to add these two numbers. So it may just add two numbers, but it adds them super fast. And it only takes up five bytes, that, that line of code, that, that block of, of code, which is 40 bits. 40 ones and zeros is pretty cool. Um, but like, that's pretty contract. It, it, can do, it can do bigger things. So um, oh, these are backwards, too. OK. So it runs at near native speed. This means that if you were to run your, the program directly on the computer with C++ or C or any high level language, um, it's going to be pretty close. It's obviously not going to be as fast as if you run it directly, but it's still going to be like comparable. That's the goal, at least. Um, and also, it's going to work with JavaScript. So it's not going to replace JavaScript. But you can think of like CPU intensive libraries that you would want to use in JavaScript. You can export them, as I showed you, and run things really quickly, like encryption or compression and stuff like that. Um, so you can go back and forth from it. You can do synchronous calls to and from JavaScript. So it's just like they're best friends. They're just running together in the browser. Um, yeah, it's safe, meaning that uh, the, there's no way an application can be malicious and access memory addresses outside of the browser, of, of what the browser gives it. Um, it's portable, so it'll work on multiple browsers, since Google, Microsoft, Apple, everyone's working on it together. Um, you can actually debug it and view the source and view line by line and edit line by line and like step through. And the best part, like it kind of sounds like Java applets, but there are no plugins involved, and you don't have to install anything. This will just work in your browser. And Java applets failed, so hopefully this will work out. Um, but none of this has happened yet. So these are goals, not the current state of WebAssembly. Um, so I'm missing a slide, but what I wanted to say is that right now WebAssembly can only uh, compile C and C++ into WebAssembly right now and run on the browser through a JavaScript eval. So I'm going to show you a demo of it. Um, so actually, what you guys don't know is I was hiding something from you. I'm running four different WebAssembly games running in Unity at the same time while I was doing all that, and I'm getting killed on one of them. But as you can see, it looks pretty good. Like, this is running the Unity engine from C++, and uh, you got cool reflections and stuff, and like, it's efficient. My computer is running four instances of this, like no problem. I was doing a presentation. I can go over here and start playing this one. Um, that's it. <laughs> cool. Uh, any questions?